So it was Joe Joyce who came out victorious tonight in the Battle of Britain against Daniel Dubois via a 10th round stoppage in what was a war of attrition. It might have not been the Hagler Hearns fight that everyone was hoping for, but my word, it was a battle. It was compelling nonetheless. It didn't have the drama of guys hitting the canvas, but it still had plenty to, to be thrilled about. And I think it was a fantastic battle between two evenly matched heavyweights at a level which I think is just below world class. I think there's still a lot of room for Joyce to improve, as well as obviously, of course, Daniel. But nonetheless, the experienced, hardened, rugged foe that is Joe Joyce came out the victor. I'm going to break down the fight a little bit um, and then from there I'm going to talk about what the aftermath and some of the other things because there's a lot to talk about so let's break it down. So round one, I kept saying all week and I've been saying it in the breakdown video and I've been putting it on the, on, on the, the, the Facebook page, I feel like Joyce is going to box, I really do and I think he's going to box, he's going to get behind the jab and he's going to use a bit of movement anti-clockwise Well, he came straight out. Dubois charged out like a ball, straight to centre ring. And within a couple seconds, Joyce is, is on the back foot and he's circling anti-clockwise in the middle of the ring, but he's on the back foot because Dubois has set the intensity. He's out straight away and he lands a real heavy jab, Joyce. <clears throat> it knocks the head back of Dubois. And I do not think Dubois recovered from that jab until the end of that round. I think he was in astonishment at the power of it, how it landed, and the frequency. Joyce just kept throwing it and throwing it with regularity, and he was just knocking his head back. It was almost like a floor-to-ceiling ball as was, was Bois's head. He had no answer to it, no answer to this, to this jab at all. He gets to the end of the round. You can already start to see reddening around the, um, the nose of Daniel Dubois. His eyes are, have widened. He's breathing slightly heavy. He goes back to the corner, and within that, Three minutes, Martin Bowers is already in between rounds. That one minute that he has, he's g him. He's in his face. He's saying, get out there, do something, change it, go. Straight after Dubois comes out. And this is where we're looking at, can Dubois cope? Can he cope with these, these pressure moments? I felt he looked a bit nervous in, in, the, in the changing room, pacing up and down. I sensed it with Bowers himself. I think there was nervous energy there. I felt Joyce was calm and focused. Second round comes... And Dewar sets out fast, he goes low, he comes up from the body to the head. He starts to land some of his power punches and he starts to get his own jab into, into play. He starts to lead off, he doesn't wait on Joyce no longer, he starts to get that jab going. And he has success, but he can't pin Joyce down. He lands a right hand to the, to the side of the head that almost looks like it shakes the, uh, Joyce, but, it, but Joyce rides for it. Joyce understands, uh, like many top level uh, athletes, you got to roll with the punches. You have got to ride this roller coaster. And he understands that for just that moment, you might be hurt, but you can get through it. And when you've got that experience of getting through those moments, it sets you in good stead because you know you've got it in the tank. He struggled that second round. Dubois was was physical. He was getting in. He was punching off the clinch. He was, you know, there was a part where Joyce tried to hold, and Dubois was punching inside the clinch. He was he wasn't waiting for the break. He was working with the free hand. And he was setting about Joyce. He wins the second. But it was from the third round onwards we started to see a decline in, in Dubois. The eye starts to swell. And then there's damage to the nose. There's blood coming out of the nose. Possibly bleeding in the mouth when you look at him in the corner. You have to look at the corner work. One corner didn't, you know, didn't show a lot of Steve Broughton uh, in fairness and his audio. But... It looked a calmer corner. Joyce looked calm. Dubois' facial expression, his mouth was wide open. He was breathing heavy after the second round. He put a lot into the second. Martin Bowers was emotional tonight. Let's be honest, he was emotional. I think he saw what was happening. He saw that for the first time, Daniel Dubois was in a real fight. For the first time, he was fighting a man that was bigger than him. You must remember that Daniel Dubois had only seven senior amateur bouts. And we don't know who that was against, really, at what level. I've seen him operate in a fight where he got disqualified as an amateur uh, abroad. But I've never seen him, you know, we don't know what level he was fighting at, senior-wise, in those bouts. But anyway, it comes to the fourth round. It's nip and tuck, but that eye's closing now. 
the damage is there. The nose, the nose is is damaged clearly, but the eyes is is a, is a problem. It's swelling. He's breathing heavy, and you can see that he's physically tiring, but he's coping. I thought Daniel Dubois did really well to fight through all of that at that stage. He was landing his jab. He was landing his power punches. The problem was that he couldn't pin Joyce down. He had no answer to the jab. The problem was all night long, Joyce was throwing that jab and that, there's, a, there's very little, Joyce will give you little looks and he'll move the hand up and down. But when he throws it, it goes from, it goes from a bent position and then it extends. He, there's very little movement. He doesn't show you the jab. Sometimes you'll see fighters like uh, Lyndon Arthur, for instance, next week. He will lift his jab off of his hip just that little bit and then flick it out. So top fighters who have got the wide eyes will see that shot coming and they will move or slip. Because Joyce throws it from where it is and it's because he's an 18 stone man, he's able to throw that jab and it lands without little movement. Dubois, he didn't, he didn't have any answer. He didn't take his head offline. His head never moves. His head's consistently centre lined. He stands down the centre of line with his hands in a in a sort of loose position, and he he never discouraged Joyce from jabbing. And this was his major problem. He never counter punched. How could he have counter punched it? Well, what he could have done, he could have slipped to the outside of the jab, come back with a right hand, left hook. He could have jab to the body himself he could have slipped Joyce's jab jab to the body come back over the top of the jab with the right hand so he could have gave more looks he could have moved his head a little bit he could have shifted back off of Joyce's jab and then looked to come back in with a one to himself he could have counted over the top he could have parried he could have done so much but the problem was he doesn't have that in his arsenal if you remember go back and watch the breakdown video I did earlier this uh, this week last week Sunday I think I made it I spoke about the fact that I don't know if he's got the defensive skills. All he has is his feet. He doesn't move his head. All he has is his feet. He can only shift back. He doesn't move his head. He doesn't parry. And that's the problem. But he was still being, he was still landing his shots. But the problem was when he was landing, he couldn't pin Joyce down because when he threw through those shots, Joyce was able to ride back and circle anti-clockwise away from his right hand. Dubois' problem is, is that he fights in one phase. So when he commits to his shots, he's just committing to his shots. He doesn't faint and then step in, jab, and then as Joyce moves away, he moves with Joyce and is able to track him down and hit him. He doesn't. He will just throw his punches, he'll throw the jab, throw the punches and if someone moves away from those, those shots they're at the end of the shots he's not moving his feet in with them so that's his problem he doesn't track the opponent down he needs to add that to his repertoire but the middle rounds I felt despite everything Dubois was still winning rounds he was still competing it was nip and tuck nip and tuck but it got to the ninth round and you could see I, I, by this point I've already made the comment I felt that I felt that there I did feel that Martin Bowers could have possibly have stopped the fight sooner. But I think the problem was he realised that Dubois possibly was ahead on the cards. And I think he was in a difficult position because he's sitting there and he's thinking to himself, if I stop this now and he's winning, it's gonna look real bad. He's competing, he's more than competing, he's winning rounds, even with that eye. And I felt like Joyce at times needed to up it. But when that ninth round came, someone made a comment in the clip, uh, the highlight of the video where you see the stoppage, made a really good point that Joyce knew he won at the end of round nine. And you see it when he makes that little celebration, he looks up and he points his fist up and he goes, yes, I've got it. He knew. You just see towards the end of round nine, you sense that Joyce starts to loosen up. He was about to put it on him. But my reason why I felt that Bowers could have stopped the fight a little bit sooner, even before round, I felt, before round nine. Despite Daniel Dubois boxing well, he clearly was struggling. He looked lost in the corner. It, he looked like a young fighter who knew that he was in deep. He was struggling, he's breathing, his facial expression, the damage facially. It was, it was a lot for him. And what the reason why I felt that he possibly could have stopped the fight was just to save him from himself. To stop him 
while looking in a strong position, if that makes sense. Blame me, I'm the trainer, I've stopped him, but he was competing. But I've stopped him because that eye damage is dangerous. We saw it recently with Mark Heffron and Denzel Bentley. Stopped the fight because the eye damage was bad. But the fact was, he continued. Round nine, he landed a few shots. The pace was slower. But towards those last 30 seconds, Joe Joyce upped it and he landed a little short right uppercut. And that right uppercut that he landed was on the left side of the face of Dubois and I think it hurt him. They go back to the corners. Broughton says to to, Dubois, uh, to Joyce, he tells him, you've got nine minutes, just box, keep your concentration. You go to the other corner, Bowers tells Dubois, you've got nine, three more rounds, you're winning. You've got three more rounds. Dubois says something to him and whispers, and I don't know what it is, but I don't get the impression it was anything other than I don't want to be here. I think he wanted out. When they resume the round for round 10, he goes down off of that jab. He looks at that corner twice as he's on, on the canvas. I think he was looking for the corner to stop the fight and realised they wasn't going to and he just stayed down. I think he needed saving from himself. That's what I'm trying to say. I think that it, he, look, he, took, he took shots, he took them well. He showed a, a solid chin. His gas tank against a fighter like Joyce wasn't terrible. Yes, he was breathing heavy, but I think a lot of that was nervous energy. I do think he's carrying a bit too much poundage. I mean, when he when he bounces, you can see the amount of muscle mass on his back. I think he's probably probably seven to eight pounds of muscle over what he should be. I think if he dropped a little bit of that, he could retain his speed. I think he's I think he's got to go away, and that's that's another talking point. But nonetheless. I feel like he he ultimately was left in a position where he had to make the decision as a young fighter and I felt that quite possibly they should have pulled him out a little bit sooner. It would have left him in a strong position because you could have pulled him and said, look, his eye's gone. That's the reason we pulled him. He was winning the fight, but the eye, there's too much damage in the eye. I make the decision. I'm the... But again, we don't know with the way things are. That was Bowers' biggest fight as a trainer. It's a big decision. So I'm not going to ultimately slag off Martin Bowers. He's done a good job with Daniel Dubois to this point. But there has to be a look at Daniel Dubois as a fighter. Listen, he's young. He can come again. There's absolutely no doubt he can come again. I think tonight he faced someone that was able to fight back at him for the first time. Someone that could fight back. Someone that took his shots. That's dispiriting. You know, someone laughs about me mentioning spiritually. You know, listen, I'm, I'm, a, spirit, you know, I'm a Christian. That's my belief process. And I believe in, in the spiritual side of things. And I felt that watching someone break like that is a very spiritual thing. I think it can be very difficult for men to deal with. when, Especially when you're built up as a beast and you're the one handing out the beatings. It can be very difficult. And we don't know if he'll ever come back from this. Can he? course he can he's, he's a young fighter but he's going to need time and he's going to but i'll tell you now when he walks into restaurants and when he walks into certain places they're going to look at him different and he'll sense it we've heard all the stories about people treating you different it's nothing like winning and when you lose you'll realize who your real friends are ultimately daniel dubois is a talented fighter he took punches tonight that other fighters who have fought Joyce have not taken and gone down. But that one moment, that split second, he could live to regret the rest of his career. But we don't know. It might have saved his career as well. We don't know the extent of the damage to the eye. But Joe Joyce won that fight because he was the better fighter, the more experienced fighter, the more mature fighter. You know, Ben Davison mentioned about Daniel Dubois showing a lot of maturity. Tonight, he showed that. But then when it was that one moment... That one moment we had a choice to either to, to go through it or not, he wasn't willing to. We've seen it happen before. What I do respect is, like Joshua, he gave an interview. He gave an interview and he, he's, he's going to have to come back and lick his wounds. And I think there might be the time now for him to change trainer. The reason I say that is I feel like Martin Bowers is possibly taking him as far as he can. I like Martin Bowers, I've seen what he's done and I've watched him and what he's done at Peacock Gym. 
I just sense that I think Daniel Dubois needs to work on the craft, the defensive stuff, the stuff that maybe Martin's not able to teach him. I don't know. I don't know him well enough, but tonight I just didn't see that Daniel Dubois... We've got to remember he's a young fighter, but I just didn't feel like he used, he moved his head. I don't think he really offered anything to stop Joyce. That was just a jab. It was a single, heavy single jab, and he took it all night long. I mean, at times, Joyce was just going jab, step, jab, step, jab, and he had no answer to it. As for Joyce, I think, I do think as he steps up, he's, there is an issue with the the lack of speed. I think there's no doubt the jab's good. He's a, his footwork's not bad, but he, it's his actual accuracy tonight with the backhand, which I was concerned about. He couldn't really get his right hand into play. Whether it was because he was concerned about being hit by, by Dubois, I'm not sure. I think it possibly was that. He was concerned about overshooting the right hand and leaving himself vulnerable. But he never, he didn't, it was like when he was throwing his hooks, they were wide, they were slow. He wasn't able to land, he needs to shorten those shots up. And I just think in all honesty, when he was throwing his, his backhand, he needs to move his feet in with them. You know, at times he's throwing it and missing, his accuracy wasn't, wasn't crisp tonight. But ultimately, his maturity and that, that single heavy jab was enough you know and I think the way he rode behind the shoulder he rode away he bounced back it looks awkward it doesn't look perfect but it worked tonight against quicker opponents and more fleet footed and the, you know people like Fury Joshua and Usyk people like that he's gonna have to come with a little bit more but as a 34 year old heavyweight tonight that was a big fight for him he wins he moves on and he's still got time to develop Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. It is a long-winded one. I normally don't do breakdowns this long, but I've got to be honest, I'm excited. I think it was a, I think it was a real good fight. Um, I'm a Wandsworth boy as well, so you know, to see a local lad, Joe Joyce, win. Look, both of them South Londoners. It's it's nice to see two young men fight there, fight hard, get this opportunity, and do well for themselves. And I, I think that's that's what's that's what's great about this sport. I don't want people to be ripping Dubois because he's quit. He did. It happens. But, you know, until you're in there, you don't know what these people are going through. And especially an 18 stone man jabbing you on the eye, it's a little bit different than, than the norm. But nonetheless, guys, leave your comments in the comment section below. I know many of you don't like my voice and you don't like my opinions. If you don't, suck it up and leave the channel. You know, you don't have to watch it. You don't have to listen to it. Ultimately, I'm just giving my opinion on the sport I love. But guys, thank you for watching. I'll speak to you and speak to you soon.